Active Directory Installation Wizard, and we can just simply click Next past this first screen. Now, this very first opening screen here, it's pretty important that you understand what each one of the different screens within this wizard means and represents. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on each one of these. Domain controller type. This screen here, you're specifying whether or not this is a brand new domain controller or it's an additional domain controller for an already existing domain. Since this is a brand new domain, meaning that no computer has created this domain already, this is going to be a domain controller for a brand new domain. If it was a second or a third or any time after the first domain controller, then you would select additional domain controller for an existing domain. Okay, so it's brand new. We're going to select the top option. Next option, create tree or child domain. Okay, here, now we have the option of creating a brand new domain tree or creating a new child domain in an existing domain tree. And hopefully you're a little bit familiar with the Microsoft Active Directory infrastructure. Okay, but a tree, keep in mind, is used in the same contiguous namespace. So for example, if we already had a domain named trainsignal.com, I may create a subdomain underneath trainsignal called south.trainsignal.com. And that would represent a child domain, and those two domains together would, be a, would form a tree. Okay, and the tree is formed because of that contiguous namespace. The child domain is south.trainsignal.com. In this case here, we're forming a brand new domain tree. Okay, there's no existing domain, there's no existing structure. You know, every domain, whether it's a little small tiny shop with one or two domain controllers, or whether it's going to be a huge company that's going to grow into, you know, a hundred or a thousand different domain controllers, everybody has to start off the same way, and that's installing the very first domain controller on the very first tree, and in our next step here, within the very first forest of domain trees. Okay, and once again, this concept may be a little bit fuzzy to you if you're not that familiar with the Windows 2000 Active Directory structure, and I do recommend that you review that in the Microsoft Press text. The theory portion, they do a pretty good job of covering. But just to refresh your memory a little bit, a forest differs from a tree in that it's a non-contiguous namespace. So, for example, if I had another company and I wanted these two domains to be related in some capacity, so I might have two different trees. One might be Train Signal, and let's say my consulting company, SAS Technology Advisors, I may want to have these domains or trees joined together so they can share information, yet I still want them to maintain their own domain name and maintain their own identity. A real good example I use for this is Toyota and Lexus. Now, these two companies are owned by the same people, okay, same shareholders. But Toyota and Lexus split up their identities, they split up their domains, their systems are maintained separately. If these two companies wanted to join forces in the sense that you can access information, you know, back and forth between Toyota and Lexus, and they very well might, I'm not familiar with their actual organization, um, they could have one forest with two separate trees. Okay, so once again, one forest with two separate trees. One tree would be Lexus.com, the second tree would be Toyota.com. And underneath those trees, that's where the subdomains would form out of each of the different you know, trees. So Lexus could have south.lexus.com and north.lexus.com. And Toyota could have south.toyota.com or north.toyota.com, either way. Okay, so that's a non-contiguous namespace, meaning that it's not continuous. You've got names that are not interrelated. Toyota and Lexus, they're, they're not forming part of the same name, okay, so they're, hence they're part of a different namespace, okay, and that's considered a new forest, okay, one forest or two trees within one forest, okay, and that's what we're going to do here, create a new forest of domain trees. The second option here, place this domain tree in an existing forest, this would be if we were forming a brand new tree, so let's say that I was the Toyota.com now, and I was placing it into a tree that already exists, such as Lexus.com. That's not the case here. Once again, this is the very first domain controller in the very first domain of our first tree of our first forest. So it's a pretty simple decision for us. Okay, next we have our DNS domain name. And don't know how familiar you're going to be with DNS, but it's important. DNS is one of the mainstays in Windows 2000 now. And behind Active Directory, DNS is probably the second most important concept. And really, you can't get away with knowing one without knowing the other. Because Active Directory depends upon DNS. A Windows 2000 network depends upon DNS. 
Okay, so here when we're specifying a DNS domain name, DNS domain names take on names that have dots in them, uh, Microsoft.com, Trainsignal.com, but they don't necessarily have to mean we're on the internet. And that's something that a lot of times confuses people. It's just a naming system. Okay, instead of using the traditional NetBIOS naming method that we're going to talk about next briefly, that only has one name and no hierarchy, a DNS structure allows us to break down our names into a hierarchical structure for further organization. I'll give you a brief example. Okay, and first off, let me show you here. If I type in a domain name here, and let's just type in Ben and Brady. Let's say that I choose this to be my DNS domain name, and I click Next gives me a message here and it warns me the domain name Ben and Brady does not appear to be a full DNS name. Okay, full DNS names usually have one or more labels separated by dots. Domain.microsoft.com be an example. And it's asking us if we're sure. So it's going to let us do it, but what we're doing here is we're not taking full advantage of the DNS hierarchical capabilities. Okay, we'd only be able to use this one name. Uh, we would not have the, like I said, the full capabilities of DNS. So what we're going to choose something a little bit different and that's going to be the actual you know full name it's going to be ben and brady.com okay and dot com here very very confusing for new students because you look at this and right away you associate this with the internet and this is indeed the way that you know the internet dns naming space works as well okay but we don't have to use dot com on our internal network if i wanted to a lot of times i'll see companies use dot local Okay, or dot internal. The point here is it doesn't really matter too much. What you're doing here is you're just going to set up a naming